You've probably heard us mention this big word eschatology throughout this study at some point. Um, don't be afraid of it. It's similar to theology uh, that comes from theos and logos, um, the study of theos, God. So eschatology is a combination of eschatos and logos, the study of eschatos, the study of what is last. So eschatology is the study of last things. And it really encompasses three areas of study. Uh, first, it's biblical prophecy that has yet been fulfilled. Uh, secondly, it is personal concerns of life and death and what follows, um, heaven and hell. Um, and thirdly, it concerns matters concerning the fulfillment of redemptive history or end times. And that's really what we're looking at in this study. When we talk about eschatology, we're looking at end times, the study of end times and that final consummation of all things. So why should we study eschatology? Um, Dr. Bruce Ware, systematic theologian from the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, and presents seven reasons why we should study eschatology. The first one is that it helps us understand God's cosmic purposes, um, that God is not making it up as He goes. Uh, he's had a plan from the beginning, and He has in mind the fulfillment of what will happen. So it helps us understand God's cosmic purposes. Secondly, it gives us hope. In Christ, we have victory. And our present troubles are not the end of the story. So studying eschatology gives us hope. Thirdly, it gives us endurance. Um, we can endure through very difficult times because we know that those very difficult times will one day be over. That all that pain will be replaced with endless joy. Fourthly, um, it helps us reassess our values. Uh, you realize that so many things uh, that we think are so important here, uh, they don't matter in the eternal scheme of things. They'll all disappear. They're not going to last. Uh, so then we see the things that will last, like our own maturity in Christ and our growth in godliness and the relationships that we have and um, helping others uh, increase in Christ-like character in them. Those are the things that will last, and those are the things that matter in the eternal scheme of things. So it helps us reassess our values. Fifthly, it, it's motivation for holiness. We realize that uh, this is what God has made us for. Um, so doesn't it make sense that we want to grow now to become more of what we will be like in the end? That one day, Yes, now we are in a process of sanctification, growing in Christ-likeness, but there's coming a day when we will be glorified and, and in perfect resurrected bodies, uh, unstained by sin. If we're made to be holy like this, it is motivation for holiness even now. Six, it's motivation for witness. Um, if you have on the forefront of your mind the eternal destiny of people, that heaven and hell are real, and that what some people decide now will impact their eternity. I mean, it shakes off all of those fears uh, that keep someone from uh, giving the one true thing that that person really needs. Um, this really matters. So it is motivation for witness. Uh, seven, and lastly, it's motivation. It's motivation for worship. Uh, to realize that everything is going to be worked out and the glory that it will be in the end gives us all the more reason to fall at the feet of God in worship of His majesty and mercy and His grace and glory for what He has prepared and that He has spared His judgment on those who are His. It's motivation for worship when we see that He is victorious over Satan and sin and death in the end, that though we are hurt, though we are plagued, though we are stained by sin right now, that He is victorious. It's motivation for worship. We can't help but worship when studying eschatology because we know that God is victorious. So that's why we study eschatology, in general eschatology. But here are some biblical reasons why we are studying in times eschatology together. And you can get uh, the first one from 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Um, here's why we're studying eschatology. That our whole being will be blameless at the coming of Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 Next, that we may be encouraged. 1 Thessalonians 4.18 That we may be blessed. Revelation 1.3 
And we're studying end times eschatology together that we may be ready. Matthew 24, Luke 12. All questions aside, in the end, we can be sure, in the end, sin will be judged, saints will be glorified, and Jesus is King. Are you ready?